All right, so I really dislike these tail light, brake light, running light, whatever thing they got going on and the back of this fat bomb. They even shipped with this weird kind of reflector right in the middle. It's double-sided taped on right up under the fender. What I have, I've got an LED strip coming and I'm gonna try to reuse this bracket um, and add maybe a piece of sheet metal to the rear to use this flexible LED strip. Now, in order to pattern out the back of this fender, I've gone ahead and taped a manila folder, eh, pretty much cross straight, because I want to get that arch. And I've used a set of calipers, or a compass, whatever you want to call it, and I've just followed along the path and I did it several times. I've got a shaky hand. I'm about three cups of coffee in this morning. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and cut it out with the scissors. If your compass caliber is like mine, tape the tip up. I started inside there. I can't... Yep, you can kind of see it. And I scuffed the paint. The tips of these are so sharp that it was trying to dig into the paint as I was trying to go back and forth. So I'm going to take this into the workshop and I'm going to get it cut out, come back out and compare it to the opening and then we can maybe transfer it to some metal. All right, I broke the scissors out and I cut out what I had traced. Now the astute of you will notice that the left does not match the right. I know for a fact that my starting point here and my starting point here were right. What I did is I folded it in half, bringing the starting points together, and you can see, you can actually see the difference. And I went outside and I tried to figure out which side I messed up on. Well, it just so happens by dumb luck that the one that is cut shorter matches perfectly. So I'm going to fold it in half, I'm going to trim along that line, and that way I guarantee I've got a symmetrical pattern on the left and the right. All right, here's the pattern that we've kind of made for the back of the wheel well or the wheel well, the back of the fender. Um, and I'll transfer that to sheet metal. And later on, you know, if it doesn't fit, you know, just perfect, I can massage it with a grinder or uh, take off some, uh, you know, extra material. I'm going to assume that this reflector, like the front reflectors and how this one was attached to the fender. And if you look, will it focus? Yeah. If you can kind of see in between the reflector, there we go, in between the reflector and the bracket, it looks like it's some more double-sided tape. I'll take the heat gun to it, soften it up a little bit, see if I can pull it apart, and hopefully we can fix HD's mess up and give this bike a really cool rear end. All right, All right. a little bit of heat, slight skinning with a razor blade, and then some lacquer thinner, and we have cleaned up the... Uh, the factory bracket so um, I guess what we're gonna be looking to do is kind of something like this and uh, use this to hold our sheet metal but uh, I don't know since this stuck up so far I might actually if you can see see how it's tr see what cuts in like that in order to get the arch there, there's an arch in there I might have to trim off the back of that because I think I'm gonna go out and look put this back up there but I think this actually sits on the outside of the fender and goes above it so I might have to come back and trim that down all right so I've gone through a couple iterations of trying to modify this bracket to see how well it would fit up under here if you see it's got a little notch and up under here there is actually a piece of metal that indexes with it so that way you get a good centered fit. In order to shrink the LED to be able to sit flush, I had to trim it where the uh, reflector actually has sat on a flat part and then you've had this little arch. I had to trim it right back to that arch. When you do that, you get just enough room to be able to index it 
and put a thin LED strip with a uh, sheet metal bracket up under there. So, uh, I'm waiting on the mailman. As soon as the mailman gets here, he's got my LED strip. And then, but in the meantime, let's uh, let's transfer that pattern we made earlier to some sheet metal and figure out a way to attach it. I might. Uh, I've got some small pop rivets. Maybe I'll bend a flange over on this and uh, throw a couple pop rivets in it or I don't know I'm not quite sure yet <laughs> who needs a plan we'll go as we'll, we'll figure it out as we go all right so I got my pattern transferred to sheet metal I'm using 16 gauge because it just happens to be what I had in the shop um, you probably get away with 18 gauge there's no real weight going to be supported by it. Um, whoa, whoa, there we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got my shape kind of finished off. I kept taking it to the grinder and smoothing it out and until I got the a shape I was happy with that fit. Or Now, uh, I made sure I deburred my edges. Make sure if you're screwing with sheet metal that uh, once you cut it, you uh, take a file to it and deburr them edges. Now we need to make this attached to this. Hmm, plastic to metal. What a conundrum. All right, so <laughs> when I cut this, I didn't allow for any bent over tabs, so I may be welding tabs on this, or I don't know. I'll have to come up with some kind of solution. Still waiting on the LED strip. I would love to have the LED strip here so that I could because this isn't going to be this big. The LED strip, I think, is only like a half inch wide. And I want to curl it up. So I might be able to manipulate some of this metal on the bottom and bring tabs up from the bottom. So, But there you have it. There's the uh, the, Har the original Harley bracket uh, trimmed down. And uh, hopefully a soon-to-be LED bracket trimmed down. We'll get rid of these honking things. Um, I'm going to steal the original wires from the... Uh, the Harley tail lights, and uh, we'll let you know how that goes. All right, the mailman has arrived, and here's our strip. Um, pretty flexy. I don't know how flexy is going to be on the bend, and we might be able to get it to go. It actually comes with 3M, I think, VHB tape on the back. There's my wire connector. Of the packaging it came with from uh, old Amazon. All right, so let's see what I can do about uh, find the location on on the bike where this actually does best, and uh, follow on, keep going to the next step. All right, I've gone ahead and kind of held it up against the bike and figured out. I ran a marker up around the edge of the fender with the plate actually tucked up in there. So it looks like I can put the LED right to the edge. Looking at the LED, you can actually see a little diode right there that marks the center, but there's, uh, there's uh, 16 LEDs in it. So if you pretty much just count over eight, mark around that diode, you'll get the center of the LED thing. And then I mark the center of the plate so that I can go ahead and line it up, and what I'll do is I'll start working. I'll peel it around, and I'll start working the uh, LED down with the curve. So. All right, so I've measured the, uh, the outside of the LED is like 0.54, so just a, a smidge over a half inch. And what I've done is set my calipers right at... Pretty much the same, not my calipers, my compass, whatever you want to call it. Right at the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribe a line so I know exactly where the uh, LED will fit. And then I can start trimming up this piece of metal. Alright, you can see I've got the line I've kind of scribed in. It gives me that half inch roughly all the way across. Now I'll see if we can take something, some of this metal and find a way to curl it around, get it attached get this attached to that all right I mounted it with some pop rivets oh, come on focus for me there we go 
All right, and I hit it with a coat of paint. I had these funky pop rivets left over from uh, putting on my Easy Go front clip. They kind of see how they kind of flare out like a like a Y, a tri Y, something like that. I'm sure any old regular pop rivet will work. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, stick on the turn signal and uh, the brake light strip, and we'll go from there. So not that I don't trust. 3M double-sided tape, but it has a little extra insurance. We spread a little hot glue between the joint where the tape meets the metal and the metal meets the joint. You can't really tell from here when it gets on the bike. You definitely won't be able to tell. All right, so now I got to get it stuck up under, but that's pretty much the gist of it. That's what she's going to look like. So I'll get some double-sided tape on the mount and. We'll start getting everything set in place, and then we'll work with the wiring. All right, so I've been kind of just cranking away here on the wiring, and I guess it uh, it's worth noting that the wires on the new LED brake light are black, yellow, green, white, and red. White is your tail light. Red is the brake light and green and yellow are your left and right turns, respectively. All right, so the Harley connectors, there's only three wires. It's black, blue, and purple. And since there's two turn signals out back and they're independent of each other, you can see right in there the, uh, the black and gray connectors both have uh, black, purple, and blue wires. What it does is when you apply the turn signal, it does the turn signal power to whichever one you're applying and if you were to hit the brake it sends power out the other side to illuminate the brake light on the non-blinking turn signal and vice versa now if you just grab the brake both lights illuminate now the problem is how do we get three wires to activate four wires essentially well five wires so I think my solution is going to be a pair of diodes that both hook to that hook to both the uh, turn signal power leads. That way, whichever one happens to be applying the brake power doesn't backfeed the turn signal, you know, to stop it from blinking, but it powers the um, the brake light, and then vice versa. Um, by using the diodes, you know, you prevent the uh, the backflow of electricity back into the other circuit. So I'm going to solder this up, get everything cleaned up, and uh, we'll give it a test, see what happens. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a smoke show. All right, looks like the diodes have done the trick. I'll go ahead and turn it on and let you guys see what's going on, and then I'll uh, show you the wiring. All right, that's just turned on. That's the tail light. We have brake light. Off the hand, off the foot, right turn signal with brake light, left turn signal with brake light, brake light. All right, I think it looks pretty cool. Pretty sweet if I don't say so myself. Kind of impressed. Not bad for 10 bucks and a few hours of work. All right, here is my wire mises. All right, as you can see, this line is the purple to the left side, left blinker, which is the yellow on the harness. And it goes into the diode, which goes into the red, right here, the red, for the brake light. Here's the purple for the right one, which ties into the green wire for the LED strip, which also goes into a diode, which ties into the red. Black is black, which is ground, and blue is white. You only need one of the blues. You got blues on both sides, but you only need one. Blue to the white, that's your tail light. So I'll, uh, I'll do a little diagram 
so you don't have to try to decipher this mess while uh, looking at the video. But uh, let me get this tidied up. I still need to pull the blinker off the other side. It's a pain in the butt. There is a up under here behind the fender. There's a T. What is this stupid thing? <clears throat> Sorry, I should have set this up on a tripod, but it's a uh, gummit craftsman T40. There's a T40 up underneath the inside of this mug. That's a real pain in the butt. These are eight millimeter Allens, and that's a that's a T40 on the other side, which takes this off. I want to make some kind of cap or something for this. I just don't like the way it looks. Um, and these are, oh, what do we got? What do we got? Probably T45s. And, oh, no, T50. These are a T50. So the two outside ones right down there by the seat are T50s. You got one on the inside, which was the T, T40. And then you've got these are 8mm Allens. Um, with those three tools, you should be able to disassemble everything you need. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the other side taken apart. This strut comes off as an assembly. From here, once you take off the one on inside, and these, the, the whole strut just comes off. And then you can get to the bolt that's actually holding the blinker on. Um, so... We'll do the other side, and we'll start putting everything back together, and we'll have a look at it. All right, I'm going to have my lovely assistant here help us out so we can see the lights. Go ahead and flip them on. Okay. Hey, we got a tail light. Go ahead and squeeze the lever. Ooh. That's odd. Okay, squeeze the lever. All right, let it go. You don't have to crush it. Hit the button. Turn signal. Hit the turn signal. Okay. Hmm, something's gone goofy. Hit the turn signal again. Go to the other side and hit the same button. Well, that side works. Hit the button. Go hit the other side. Hmm, something went goofy. All right, I'm going to try this again. Um, FYI. When you're putting back in the docking hardware or your side strut mounts, which I use to actually hold the uh, cable for the turn signals, um, be careful you put it in the middle of the strut holder where there's room and not on the end. Uh, yeah, so I tightened it down and it cut right through my right turn signal. But as you can see, they're, they're bright. Um, apologize for whipping around on you, but um, there you go. I'll post my schematic online, and uh, or I'll give you a picture of it here somewhere in the video. I'm sure. Ten bucks, Amazon, a little bit of your time, and uh, you can have a a cool little addition to your bike and. Get rid of them stupid freaking non-LED blinks and brakes in the rear. There's your tidbit for the day.